why, when, how, what does it mean? What, do we, what, what does it mean when we think about that? We go through some common conditions. Uh, we've got a little sneaky special, as promised, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll have empty meetings as well. Oh. So why and when? I think we'll, I'll lump those two questions together because uh, it is, uh, it's quite similar in a way. When the diagnosis is not obtained through clinical examination, we examine the dog, we take a history, we still have no idea what is going on. So we cannot find what we need to find externally. Let's look internally when doing a blood test because there's some things that the blood, can, the, the blood test can tell us that it's not uh, reflected through a heart rate or a temperature or a breathing rate or just physical examination of the patient and things like that. So uh, this is to give us more answers to what's happening. To rule out something. So we may have seen the gums are very, very pale. Okay, not very sure about a dog. Let's do a blood test to check what is the axial bone, whether there's anemia or not, to rule out something. Okay, to differentiate conditions with similar signs. Dog comes in that is drinking more than usual. Cat comes in that is weaning more than usual. There are a lot of different reasons that can cause the same clinical signs, which you sometimes cannot see on clinical examination because you simply just can't differentiate between, say, kidney disease um, or sort of uh, Cushing's um, just by looking at an animals. So we do a blood test to differentiate similar clinical signs. So, yeah. To find out more, some people they come in to check uh, when it's an ovulation time before they go and breed the dog. Breed, uh, breed the beach, and, and sometimes they do go travel quite far to do that, so they come in and check what's their progesterone level, and like that. so it's to, to, to find out more. So those are a few different reasons why we run a blood test. How it's fairly straightforward, you need to get a blood sample off somewhere, so usually jugular or cephalic, front leg, okay? Um, the theory behind it is that the blood sampling also matters because it does affect the sample, so it does what? The blood sampling, yeah. the way you take the blood, oh, right. yeah. also matters. 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 Yeah. yeah, also matters because uh, it does affect uh, some of them. Some bits does affect the results. So why, what the choice of both is uh, the pros and cons. Okay, so cephalic on the leg, arguably it's not too close to the neck. You know, you get the animal in a uh, slightly different position to raise the neck to the just over here. Raise the leg and you take the blood from that. That's where we put catheters, uh, catheters in. Uh, most people they are quite used to seeking things like that. Okay, one of the disadvantages is comparatively to the jugular, the vein is much smaller. Okay? And so, just to be clear, we always take blood from the vein, not the artery. Okay, we do take blood from the artery for smaller blood tests for different things, but usually we always move the vein, yeah? unless they otherwise. So the vein is much smaller, which also means that drawing the blood is much slower. Okay, because if you can imagine the vein is like, even the neck or the leg, is like a soft tube. So when you draw the blood, you take too much, it collapses. And so you must slowly draw without collapsing the vein. Okay, so the cephalic is uh, one way of taking it, but it is quite slow. And sometimes the animal can't stay for long in that. So you just going to be that more patient and animal with patient. The handling skills at, uh, may need to be more improved using the leg vein. The juggler, on the other hand, huge juggler. Okay, so the sampling is usually very fast because it literally gushes up. So uh, the sampling time is much shorter, and the idea behind it is because the juggler is much uh, bigger, you can use a larger ball needle to go in there compared to a smaller vein. You cannot use a needle that's too wide, and the whole idea behind a wider ball needle as wide as possible um, is to sort of balance between the pain involved. Okay, because the bigger the needle, the more painful it is. However, the better the sample, because right now, first of all, it'll be faster. It's easier to suck through a larger slot than a narrow slot. Yep. So the sampling is much faster. And also, if it's too narrow, sometimes uh, the idea behind it is that the red blood cells can get damaged when you're sucking through a very, very narrow needle compared to a wide needle. And hence, sometimes you get what we call hem uh, hemolysis, breaking down with the red blood cell. It could be due to the sampling technique. Okay, so that is why always go for the larger vein. So, larger vein, larger needle at the, uh, at the juggler. So those are the two most common places where we take blood from. Uh, wider ball needle, better something. We discussed this. Um, for obvious reasons, wider ball needle is you can't really use it with uh, a because it's much smaller vein. We need to clip the hair. You have asked, why do you need to clip the hair? I said, well, 
comparatively, you know, for humans, we have about a, th a, th a thousand hair per square inch. For a dog, it's 15,000 hair per square inch. So they're a little bit hairier, <laughs> just a little bit. And if we want to go into the vein, it is a sterile place. We do not want to be introducing any bacteria from the outside world into the vein, causing septicemia or infection. Um, and uh, if we can flip that area, then we can tap it properly because we can do it in rest with all the hair. First of all, it's not easy to see the vein, even when we raise it because of the hair. And second, and the last thing is stabbing it, doing it wrongly, so to speak. Um, and the other one is that to clean it really, it's, it's, it's much easier to clean without hair, it's just kind of vacuum for the poison floor compared to layer floor. So it's not just an easy to clean. We do keep them in special tubes, depending on what sort of uh, uh, what sort of blood something is needed, um, depending on what sort of results are desired. So they don't all just go to the same tube. So you have different tubes with different uh, preservative agents or some of them to stop uh, blood clotting or others is to actually encourage the blood to clot because of the different components of the blood. So uh, it's, it's quite different. Yeah. It is a skilled job. I'll argue that it is a skilled job. So in NHS in medical field. We've got people who we call phlebotomists, whereby their profession is just to take blood. And uh, in vets, we haven't got phlebotomists, but we've got vets, assistants, vet nurses, vets, so to speak. So we've got trained to that as well. And it always, uh, it's always quite interesting when you have your, uh, like my team, my nurses are just saying, I just have a blood taken the other day. They have to do it 15 times when they go to vein. Like, okay. <laughs> then I always felt, and this just a personal that. If we can take blood from a kitten, we can put as like squirmy kitten, <laughs> we pro probably take blood from a lot of different things really. But um, yeah, so it is a skilled job. So both in the handling, the restraint of the animal, and also the um, the person who is taking the blood from. And uh, personally, I always feel the bulk of the effort comes from the handling. If the handler is a great handler. It makes the job much easier. So when you actually get blood out from a struggling kitten, it's not because the person took the blood is good. It's probably the person who is handling the kitten along the blood is good. But that's just not the important thing. But there are many, many types of blood tests. Okay, so this is one big thing which a lot of owners they always say, Oh, so you're doing a blood test, so, so can you find out everything? No. Easy answer. Because there's so many different types of blood tests depending on what you're what you're wanting for. And so just because you have a blood test doesn't mean that that is the only blood test that the animal will ever need to find out all the diseases under the sun. Okay, it simply isn't. There is a lot, a lot of different components. So what usually uh, vets do is that, what vets should be doing is that we should be taking blood tests that is more specific to the condition. It's not just a shotgun approach. It's more of a sniper approach. Okay, I feel it is there. This blood test will allow me a different shape, different exploit that rather than I don't know idea what's happening, let's say about that see Okay, so that is the difference. And there are a lot, a lot of different blood tests, so just to make it very clear, it's not just, oh, we had a blood test, uh, and hence, uh, we find out the answer. No, a blood test may lead to another blood test. May lead to another blood test. It's just depending on what the most uh, obvious thing to do at a point.